All right, today we are going to learn about some shortcuts for finding the derivative, specifically focused on something called the power rule. But we're going to talk about taking the derivative of a constant without that limit definition, the power rule without the limit definition, the constant multiple rule without the limit definition, and the sum and difference rule without using the limit definition. So the idea of this limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h being equal to the derivative of f at x, that's still true. It's just that over time, we've seen some patterns emerge from doing this limit process over and over and over. So let's summarize those patterns. Shortcuts, aka the patterns that emerge in mathematics. First of all, this notation d dx, d dx, d dx, d dx, d dx, the d in the top is talking about I'm going to take the derivative. So take the derivative, and this is with respect to x. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. This is a verb. This is an action phrase in mathematics. You are taking the derivative. Well, the derivative of a constant, remind yourself what a constant is, something that doesn't vary, great. The derivative of any constant is going to be 0. Because if we think about a constant, the graph of a constant is going to be a horizontal line. So when I go and find the slope of that horizontal line, the slope is going to be zero. There is zero rise, there is only one. So the derivative of a constant is going to be zero. The next one is the power rule. The power rule will be extremely useful to us over the next however many months. The power rule is that if you have a function written in the form of a power, power functions have a variable in the base and a power that is the constant, okay? So I might have something like x to the one-fourth or x to the two-thirds or x to the ninth or x to the negative one. doesn't matter. As long as there is a variable in the base and a constant in the exponent, we call that a power function. So the way we take the derivative of a power function is using the power rule, and that will take n, swing that down in front, then multiply by that same variable x, but this time the power lowered by 1. So an example of this, we worked together to find the graph of the derivative of x to the third. The derivative of x to the third would be 3 times x squared. The derivative, I'm taking it, of x squared would be 2 times x. So you use the power rule when taking the derivative of a power function. This next one kind of combines the two. This is the constant multiple rule. Constant multiple rule. So a constant multiple has a c, a constant, out in front of that power function. And if we think about that, well, in terms of the power function or later in life it's going to be other functions too, but that c on a graph represents some sort of a vertical stretch. Right? So if I had something like 4 x to the 8th, that would be the graph of x to the 8th vertically stretched by 4. Well, if I'm going to vertically stretch the function, what ends up happening is that my slope gets vertically stretched by that same amount. So the c ends up just being there in front, hanging out, and I apply the power rule that I just talked about. So what this looks like is, again, if I had, let's say, 2x to the 4th. Well, this is an x to the 4th graph that's been vertically stretched by 2. So when I go to take the derivative, 2 just hangs out, and I apply the power rule for x to the 3rd. Clean that up. I get 8x x to the 3rd. Because what I get is the derivative of x to the 4th that has that same graph vertical stretch of 2. Now, of course, students always ask, can I just say 4 times 2 is 8 and then drop the power? Yes, absolutely. It's almost like a shortcut within the shortcut. Last one, sum and or difference rule. Sum in mathematics stands for addition. Difference is subtraction. So to apply this rule, if I take the derivative with respect to x, again, that's what the d dx is, all I do is I take the derivative of f and I add to it the derivative of g. 
Or had I been subtracting, I would take the derivative of f and subtract the derivative of g. Let's try some together. So I have a little chart for you to fill out. I have the original function. I have a place for you to rewrite question mark. And when I say rewrite question mark, I mean, do you need to rewrite your function so that it is in the format of a power function to then be able to apply the power rule in taking the derivative? And I will tell you that this one is going to need a rewrite, and this one's going to need a rewrite, and this one's going to need a rewrite. So I'm going to help you get started. x to the third doesn't need a rewrite, so I'm just going to write it as it is. Its derivative then becomes 3 times x squared. This next one, when I talk about a rewrite, I'm going to say it would be helpful to rewrite this as x to the negative fourth because now I have this variable in the base and a constant in the exponent, I can apply my power rule. This next one, this really means take the fourth root of x to the first, or take x to the first and the fourth root. So the four is the root that goes underneath, that's in the denominator. The one is the power, that's powerful, that's in the numerator. I have not done any calculus yet. This is just the rewrite step. The derivative step then says use the power rule. 1 fourth x, 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. That was a 4. This next one does not need a rewrite. You can leave it just as it is. Each one of these is in their own power format ready to go. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. And the derivative of negative 3 is 0 because negative 3 is a constant. The last one we're going to need to rewrite. Pi is in the numerator, 3 is in the denominator, but then I also have, if I think about pi thirds, what I'm left with is 1 over x squared. So that would be the same thing as multiplying by x to the negative second. Now I can use my power rule, technically along with the constant multiple rule, and I get negative 2 pi over 3 x to the negative third. Now, for all intents and purposes, your final answer on a free response question, on a textbook problem, on a test even, you can leave them this messy, okay? That's perfectly fine. That is the derivative. That's a great answer. However, sometimes on multiple choice exams, they will have cleaned up the answer. So this will actually be written as negative 4 over x to the fifth, where this might be 1 over 4, oops, 1 over 4, fourth root of x to the third. This one will be totally fine. This one you might see negative 2 pi over 3x to the third. So again, this would most likely happen on multiple choice. You need to be fluent enough in all of your previous math skills to be able to rewrite if needed. But these are technically correct answers. These are the derivatives of these functions up here. Reminder, some ways to ask for the derivative. If you are asked to find f prime of x, if you are asked to find the derivative with respect to x, if you are asked what is dy dx, that represents the change in y over the change in x at an instant, the instantaneous rate of change, the slope at a point, the slope of the tangent line, lots of things meaning the same. And what that used to mean for us is the whole limit definition. What it means now is take a shortcut when you can. For those of you that are interested, I do have a proof of the power rule. If you are not interested, that's okay. Uh, you can be done. But for those of you that are interested, I do want to show you this because it is pretty cool and math is pretty awesome for how patterns emerge. So let's say that f of x is equal to x to the nth, so a power function. Then, to apply my limit definition, when I do x plus h into function f, I end up with x plus h to the nth power minus x to the nth. And this right here, x plus h to the nth power, has a very special formula called, the, called Pascal triangle, Pascal's triangle, the binomial expansion theorem. We can see a little bit of that. If I do x plus h squared, you guys are used to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. If I did x plus h to the third power, I get x to the third plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h to the third. 
If I do x plus h to the fourth, I end up with x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h plus 6x squared h squared plus 4xh cubed plus h to the fourth. And so what I want you to see is that 1 plus 2 gives me 3, and 2 plus 1 gives me 3, and 1 plus 3 gives me 4, and 3 plus 3 gets me 6, and 3 plus 1 gets me 4. The other thing to notice is that this is x squared, then I drop a power, but then I gain a power on my h's. So this was x to the third, second, first, but my h's gain h to the first, second, third. There's all sorts of crazy cool patterns going on. So if I want to generalize this to be x plus h to the nth, this is what it looks like. So our x plus h to the nth is this part here. And then remember, I still, in my original derivative formula, had x to the nth. These are just fancy ways of getting your coefficients. This says n choose 1, n choose 2, etc. Notice that the power on your x is going down, but the power on your h is going up. Okay, so that's Pascal's triangle at work. But what ends up happening is that this very first x to the nth cancels with this x to the nth every single time. So what I'm left with is n choose 1, which is just n, x to the n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, h, plus n choose 2, etc., all the way down to h to the n. But the limit as h approaches 0, we know we would get 0 over 0. So what I can do is I can cancel out an h and an h and an h. So I'm left with h to the n plus 1. This one just has h. All those middle ones still have an h. But this guy doesn't have any h's left. So now when I do direct substitution, I get my power rule x to the n minus 1. For those of you that stuck around to the very end, just remember this is rooted in the idea of Pascal's triangle. Pascal is the name of the mathematician. This also comes from the binomial expansion theorem. That you could look some information up about that. Uh, but it's just kind of a cool way to show you a proof of how things work. The power rule exists for a reason built over many, 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 many patterns of thinking. But the real thing you need to know is this lovely summary page.